Greetings, citizens. Today I want to talk about cargo transportation. Now, I know a lot of people will say that the numbers are incorrect, or the stats are bad, or it's pre-alpha, and the numbers are all subject to change. They're right. And while the numbers themselves will change, notice I say will, the concepts, topic, and ideas presented within this video are all still valid. Because, yes, the masses will change, or the cargo you're transporting will differ from what I'm you know, advocating here. But the idea presented is still the way that they're they're looking to work it in-game. Now, in transporting cargo, it's important to understand scale. I could easily carry a small box from one room to another by myself. A car can easily carry a few people from one place to another. A semi-truck, or a lorry for those of you not from America, could easily carry a number of cars from one place to another, and a cargo carrier loop really massive ships can carry hundreds, if not thousands, of lorries. These scales are great, but you really don't want to use, say, that super cargo carrier to carry a box from my room into another room. It's just, it's not scalable. It's overkill, and it's a waste, right? Now, before we get started, I need to explain a few assumptions that I've made to make the numbers work. The first assumption that I've made is that all of the cargo is the same. In each of the scenarios, we're carrying the same cargo, just a different amount. This makes more having, like, to take six loads the same. One ship can carry all of your stuff, and then you have to carry six loads, but each load has a different mass. It, it just messes with the math. All of the cargo is going to the same place. This is our second assumption. Having multiple drop-off points or multiple destinations, again, make the math a lot more complicated. Because it, it just is, you know, having multiples of things, especially differing values, really make things complicated. And assumption number three is all of our cargo is water. Water has a, has a mass at nominal temperature or room temperature of 250 kilograms per freight unit in Star Citizen because a freight unit is one quarter of a, of a cubic meter. Water at room temperature has a has a mass of 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. A quarter of that, 250. So those are our three assumptions. Very basic assumptions. Why do we have to assume that freight has mass? Well, number one, it does. And in Star Citizen, carrying freight, or carrying anything really, adds to the mass of your ship. So right now in Arena Commander 1.0, which just got released, which is great, all of our ships are empty. I mean, we have guns and ammo and things, but that doesn't really affect the mass of our ships. We need to account for that because it will be accounted for in the game. If you take a cargo ship, say the whole sea, and load it up with cargo, it's going to weigh a lot more. And we'll see that here in a couple of minutes when I get down to that, to, to talking about the whole sea. Your acceleration is going to be reduced. You're going to have much poorer handling because you're pushing a lot more mass. It also increases your fuel usage. This means the more cargo you can move with the least added mass, the better. We are, as I said earlier, assuming 250 kilograms per freight unit because of we're going to talk about water. Mostly because it also doesn't compress. You cannot compress water. And it's relatively a stable mass. It changes a couple of uh, maybe up to a kilogram, I think, as long as it's still water. Uh, it changes mass when it goes to ice, and it changes mass when it goes to steam. But as long as it's still water, meaning in that temperature band between those two, it still weighs roughly the same, or it mass is roughly the same. Weight and mass are pretty similar. Weight and mass are exactly the same under 1G. It, yeah, that's a complicated topic that I don't want to get into right now. So anyway, on to a breakdown. I'm going to do this in several parts. First, we're going to start with what I'm calling really expensive but small cargo. This is the only time we're going to ignore several of our assumptions. Number one, we're not moving water. And number two, we're not moving anything more than one freight unit. Okay? Because we're talking about data or we're talking about, like, very precious, high value but small items. So, in, in this case, you're going to be, wa you're going to want to use something like the, the Auroras, the 300 series, the F7C with its cargo box, because it can it can carry 
cargo. Um, you could use the other F- F7s if it's something that we are allowed to take on per- our person as, you know, like it, maybe it's a document and you can stuff it in your, your personal inventory and then get in your ship and fly with it. Your M50s. So yeah, I mean, th- those are the ones we're looking at, right? Taking a larger ship just draws attention to you. You certainly could haul it in a, in a, in a hull C, for example. But if that's all you're hauling, it's really a waste, okay? And in this section, you're looking at between speed and safety. Now, I'm going to... That's two different concepts. The M50 is lightning fast, but it has almost no shields and no armor. You know, you get caught in that, and you're probably going to get killed. The Auroras, the 300s, and the Hornets can put up a fight, you know, because that's what they're built for. Especially the Hornet. A Hornet can kick somebody in the teeth. So... You know, your choice there is between the speed and flash of an M50, which can get there really fast and maybe outrun the people that are going to try to stop you. A Hornet on the other end, which will take a while to get there, but people aren't going to want to mess with you as much because you can kill them. Next up, we have the small-scale trader. It's a small-time trader moving his own goods. I used a random number generator to come up with the amount here. I was aiming between 70 and 100 freight units, and it came up with 74. It splits out some of the smaller ships, things like the the, the M50 you're not going to want to use. It's got almost no cargo space. It would take forever to run this stuff. While an Aurora can haul it with a few trips, three to five, depending on which one you're using. The CL can do it in three. Uh, the others are in five, along with the, the 300 eyes or the 300 series. You're really racking up the fuel usage there. You're also racking up what I'm going to call transit mass. Now, this is the first time I'm, tra- I'm mentioning transit mass, so I should probably ex- explain what it is. A ship masses a certain amount. It means it has a certain amount of, of mass that you have to move, even if it's completely empty. Normally, this is called a null cargo mass, as listed on the RSI website, or an empty mass. Transit mass is basically the cumulative amount of null cargo mass plus cargo mass from multiple trips. So if you have to make three trips there and two trips back to make pick up more stuff, that's technically five runs in the ship. So you have to move the ship's mass five times. So it racks it up really fast. For, it, it, for instance, a 300 eyes null cargo mass is 20,085 kilograms. But to move 74 units of cargo, a total cargo mass of 18,500 kilograms means making five trips there, four trips back to pick up more cargo. In transit mass is now 204,286 kilograms, which really makes it unsuitable for this case because a caterpillar while it's woefully empty at this at this amount of cargo, would only have a transit mass of 103,016 kilograms. So, we were talking about the small-scale trader, 74 freight units, the Aurora CL, any of the Freelancer variants, the Avenger, or the Cutlass would be suitable at their current statistics. The Cutlass and Freelancer can do it in one trip. The Aurora CL and the Avenger could do it in three, though the CL has a much better transit mass per freight unit than the Avenger. Now we have the medium-scale transports. Freight units, 702. I'm going to say this straight out. Do not use an Aurora 300, the Avenger, or any Hornet to try to move this amount of cargo. I really shouldn't have to say that, but I'm going to because people just will try. This is way too much cargo to try. Even with the CL, it's just too much. Okay? Now, here we're at the upper range of the Freelancer, the nominal range of the Constellation LA 890 Jump, the Idris, the Orion, the Retaliator, and the Starfarer. Whereas the Reclaimer, Merchantman, Halsey, and the Caterpillar and the Javelin are barely even breaking a sweat at this vault, at this amount of cargo. The Freelancer Max can make three trips to deliver this, has double the transit mass of all the Connies, which all except the Phoenix can do it in one run. Really, you're looking at the Constellations, the 890s. Not sure why you would try this in the, in the Idris. It's a capital ship. You really shouldn't be moving cargo in it, but you might. So yeah, that's where we're looking at this one. The Starfarer, the Orion, the Retaliator. All good cargo f- ferries in this scale. And now the big daddies. The large scale hauling. 8,440. 
I was aiming anywhere between 7,500 and 10. It picked it, this number, so that's what we're going to go with. There's currently only one ship in the verse that can make this trip in one go. That's the Hull C, and it's still only three quarters full, or thereabouts. So it is the cargo hauler. But who else can give that a run for its money? Now, the Javelin can do it, the Merchantman can do it, and both of those will do it in two trips. The Caterpillar will do it in three trips. So we have four basic contenders here. All of them do it in a limited number of trips. So let's look at the transit, transient mass. Now the Hull C has a full transient mass with one trip of 3,357,220 kilograms. But even with three trips from the Caterpillar, that's three trips there and two trips back to pick up the, the rest of the cargo, the, the Caterpillar is only going to have moved a total of 2,555,822 kilograms. Almost a full million kilograms less, okay? The Merchantman will have moved, in opposition, 4,392,724 kilograms, going the exact opposite way of the Caterpillar. This is mainly due to the Merchantman actually being a ship and the Caterpillar basically being a drive on the back of a cargo container. Now, we could talk about the Javelin, because as I said, it'll make it in two trips. However, at this time, CIG has not released the null mass of the Javelin. They're still debating it. So I really can't do statistical breakdown on it. So this one would really come down to the difference between fuel usage and time. How much difference does that million kilogram difference between the Caterpillar and the Hull C, and then the Hull C and the Merchantman make? Is it worth the extra time or using the extra ships to move that cargo compared to one use of the Hull C in terms of fuel and time? And that brings us back to the whole point of this. Moving things from one point in the in Star Citizen to another is a much more complex matter than a lot of people are looking at or probably even thinking about at the moment. A lot of people have been saying, and I've heard, you know, I can, I'll just make a lot of trips with my Aurora, or I've got a haul seat, doesn't matter what, what I'm hauling, I can fit everything. It does matter what you're hauling, it matters in efficiency, in time, in target. If you're only transporting a potato, using a haul seat is ridiculous. If you're trying to transport small documents that are very valuable, Use a Herald, right? It's not really on my list because the cargo capacity currently is set to zero along with the Carrick. I can't list the Carrick because it also has a cargo of zero at the moment because they're both dependent on the configuration you load them out with. But those two ships could, could be contenders. We don't know. In conclusion, mass is important. How you think about things is important. Going out and saying, I have the biggest and best ship, isn't necessarily the biggest or the best for that role. If you only need to roll, move 16 cargo units, you might want to look at a 300i or an Aurora, because they can do that, and they might get there faster and with less fuel, and be less of a target for pirates. Whereas if you need to move a mountain or a planet, look at the whole sea. It can probably do it better than anybody else. All right, I will leave a link in the in the description below with my math. I have created a website. You tell it how much within a certain number of ranges, how much cargo you want to use, and it will tell you the null mass, the transient mass, the number of trips, and the cargo per, or the, the mass per cargo unit of the transient mass it will take for that ship to move the, move your cargo. I'll be expanding on that in the future, probably making it look a bit better, easier to work with, but thank you for watching, and have a great day.